So at first I would like to invite the, the, the panelists of the industry, uh, Mr. Alger, uh, please join us in the panel. Also Mr. Sam Barnett, Chief Executive Officer of MPC Group. Uh, Dr. Ismail Maqdisi, Vice President, Corporate Affairs of Integral. And Mr. Muhammad Youssef, Chief Executive Officer of uh, Yacht Life. Please join me at the panel. A couple of days ago. Um, good afternoon. My name is Michel Abutali. I'm a musician and a business development professional, and I'm here to present Azov.com. First, I'd like to say that um, we're very happy to be here. Um, we're the youngest among the startups uh, speaking here today, and we're very happy for people who voted for us to be among you today. Azov.com is an online music school that teaches users how to play musical instruments through pre recorded video lessons. And I'd like to show you a sample of the videos we produce. أنا ناصر سلامي من أعزف دوت كوم اليوم الحصة السابعة راح نحكي فيها شوية معلومات نكتشف إنه نفس النوت بس عن النوت واحدة زيادة تخيل واحدة كلها صورة عم تسمعوا فرق بالحقيقة هاي الحالة الشادة بالموسيقى صن فا فا مي مي ري ري دو هسا بدي أكون ماسك النسبة الأول والوطن الثاني Okay, first it was very expensive for me and I couldn't commit to fixed timing every single week to attend the lesson and I ended up paying for lessons I didn't even attend. I didn't like the particular instructor assigned to me and I couldn't change that because he was the only one available on Tuesdays at 5 a.m. Uh, the teaching method was irrelevant. I wanted to learn blues and jazz guitar and they gave me a professional flamenco Spanish guitarist. Um, the music school was far away from my house and Transportation was a hassle for me, and I didn't face this issue, but there is a gender sensitivity issue when it comes to one-on-one -on -one private lessons in the Arab world. So Azov.com solved these issues by providing high-quality music education at an affordable price. We're available anytime, anywhere, being online, and we have multiple instructors for each instrument so, uh, that you can choose from, and therefore multiple teaching methodologies and multiple styles of music that you can learn. Um, our instructors are experienced, they range between 7 years and 20 years of teaching experience. We also have a team of popular musicians that you find on stages performing live in front of audiences. And uh, they give courses of special techniques like composition and songwriting and special techniques. And we also have a library of popular songs. So that if you already know how to play the instrument and want to learn for example, you find it there. Now the opportunity in our world is huge. According to Google, there are 4.9 million monthly text search queries coming from the Arab world about how to play a musical instrument, not to mention the search on musical instruments themselves. And we have decided to focus on KSA Egypt and Jordan because they represent 54% of this total. And what's interesting about Saudi Arabia is that there are no offline music centers and that's why people are searching online. And by the way, this search does not include search on YouTube, which might be more logical. Now, uh, as I've said, we've been live for only 21 days, three weeks. Uh, we have uh, 120 videos on the site right now, three courses of Rund, Tabli, and Guitar. Uh, in those 21 days, we have attracted 21,000, uh, more than 21,000 visitors, and uh, over 63,000 page views over 11,000 YouTube views on uh, 10 videos on the channel and we have 1,500 registered users who are currently watching our videos and starting their journey in music education. Uh, thank you very much and I look forward to our discussion. Thank you, sir. So, gentlemen, your challenge, your witness. Good. Thank you, Jawad, for this uh, new concept we were uh, just talking about. Uh, uh, me and Sam, on how, or, what to name it is. Uh, but Sam being an NBC, we said that uh, Arab got business talent kind of thing. Um, I, I hope this format uh, works for everybody. It's uh, quite interesting. Um, I just have a question. When you put up the uh, Google uh, information. Could you tell me 
where these people are searching for how or where to learn? Well, actually, these searches uh, include uh, terms like online music lessons or learn the guitar or uh, learn the guitar online. Actually, you put in the search term and Google gives you all the derivatives uh, for that. But it's a specific search that talks about learning music, learning how to play music. But it, it just uh, doesn't tell us if it's uh, I really want to learn how I want to learn it or where I want to learn it. Um, it just it shows it shows the interest coming from the other world about learning music. Um, I, I think what would be interesting and my colleagues here would want to know is uh, uh, how do you make money out of this? Okay, uh, our revenue streams include. Uh, uh, we have uh, for every for every instrument we have uh, a number of free lessons, so you can actually try learning. And we and after you reach a certain limit, you start paying for access to to those videos. That's one of the revenue streams that we have. We sell it per lesson, per course, and we once we have a sufficient number of videos, we're going to introduce the subscription model. And we also uh, having a great balance between free videos and paid videos. And the free videos, they include also entertaining videos of performances. Uh, it's like a sh showing, uh, uh, it's not all education, it's, it includes a music show as well. Yeah. You can only find it in Ezra.com. And that, uh, that brings the traffic also to get advertisers and sponsorship. And we also have the product placement within the videos that we can, uh, we can introduce. And we also have another big value stream, which is uh, we design special content videos, and we, uh, we, we're going to be sending it to uh, other media. We're currently talking to uh, a couple of uh, TV stations as well, to, uh, and we're looking at it. Mr. Sam, <coughs> That's one TV station for you, so Sam, please. Uh, I, I, I like the concept. I think it's, it's fun. I think it's ambitious. I think it draws upon all the, the different things that the internet can do. Um, I'm currently learning grade four piano and going through some of the pain that uh, you, you, you've been through. And there's lots of information around that you uh, it's kind of dis disaggregated and that you're uh, something like this can, can pull together. Uh, trying to find sheet music, trying to hear the music you're playing, uh, trying to uh, the, the key the key thing is is the lessons. And I'm and I'm like Mohammed, I'm 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 wondering. Uh, whether you'll get the revenues you want. Uh, when you were speaking just then, I was reminded of the, the, the gym market or the fitness market. Yeah. Where people sign up and they pay on January the 1st with a bigger commitment to, to getting fit. And mostly they don't go back after the 15th of January. But the, the fitness clubs have made their money. And I'm wondering if you don't take their money out, uh, up front, whether after they've done a few lessons, they're still going to be committed and, and Okay, so um, I'm, 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 it's great that you're getting the, <coughs> the, the interest on Google, but turning that into subscription revenue, uh, I think you may have a challenge. But I'll be, I'll be interested to know how, you, how you've done it in the first few days. Now, uh, currently what's happening is that we have, uh, we have given people access to the free lessons, so they can actually, we need to change the stereotypes that uh, people think that uh, learning music is very difficult. You have to study hard and, and learn the music notation on day one. We try to break that stereotype. So we're showing them a couple of lessons where they can actually hold the instrument and, and start to develop and start learning uh, how to play a few tunes, you know. And then they can uh, be sure 100% that they're going to learn. Now, uh, regarding the, uh, the, the subscription model and everything, we're going to have very interesting values for the customers. For example, uh, if you subscribe to Kaiser.com, you get discounts on music instruments. You get to have free seminars online with the instructors to discuss musical issues. And we're going to build actually, uh, uh, starting uh, year two, we're going to start developing a small musical Facebook. That's a community for musicians. You can download cheap music. You can connect with musicians and jam around. You can uh, you can have uh, you can share interesting musical videos with friends, and you can create your profile and musical identity. And that is something that people really, really uh, brag about, you know, having uh, uh, being a musician or 
loving a specific music style. And that's what we're talking about. And by the way, uh, the online content regarding musical education is close to zero in Arabic. So that's what we're, we're developing high quality musical education at a very affordable price. And what you pay in an offline center for two lessons, you pay for 25 lessons. So I must say, just one last minute. And we have I would got the voice we have some kind of so I would love it I'll link up with you. If you find anybody out there, if we can uh, if we can Definitely actually we're thinking about it. Find the for you. It'd be great. Actually we're forming the as if band and we might get into all your talent as well. I think it's a very powerful concept. And that's my humble opinion. I will first focus on making money and getting people on subscription. I would go for the scale. Because when you have the scale, then you may also make deals with the musical instrument manufacturers. And you can bring some e-commerce aspect to it as well. Um, certainly, that could be deals with the content providers and service providers. My question would be though, what would, uh, what's your competitive issue? What would stop any conventional uh, music school or music course to launch a similar website like yours? Okay. Now, music schools, um, they, have, uh, they go by the book when, when they teach music, you know? They tell you if you want to learn this instrument, you'll have to go grade one, grade two, whatever. We're going to have that. But our competitive edge is that we can teach you to play the instrument and play certain Play what you want without going through all these, you know, time consuming and studying and, and everything. Yeah. I just want to say something. Yeah, learning music is much easier than people think. Paul McCartney in one of his interviews said that uh, uh, he doesn't know how to read sheet music. So the, uh, the, 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 the interviewer went crazy. You know, this is Paul McCartney, the Beatles and everything. He said we, we didn't have to. We just written the road the course down and we know the music and we memorize it and we sing it and that's it. So if you if you want to jam around and play a couple of songs then you don't have to learn music theory. So that's that's the main concept that we're trying to get to people. It's much easier than you think. And uh, I want to go back to the to the uh, subscription issue that you uh, mentioned. Actually the subscription model will be to do to do in year two because by then we're gonna have sufficient content a number of videos that you cannot you know finish in one or two months. So right now we're, we're focusing on building our free content plus selling access to uh, lesson by lesson and by courses. And actually we're very, very happy with the with the uh, few customers that you have since we were only three weeks old. So your value proposition relies on your claim that you have a powerful way of teaching musical instruments, how to play musical instruments than the conventional Music schools or courses will do. That's right. It's an ambitious uh, value proposition. It's, it's giving a choice to the user. It's giving a choice. We're going to have the ABC, the conventional way of teaching, and we're going to have this one way of teaching that are going to be given by also this is another value. Uh, popular performing musicians that you see uh, performing on stages in the world. Thank you. Thank you. I. Thank you. I love the idea, and I, and I believe it is, it is awesome. The most challenging task here is that it, it appeals to the long tail, to the niche market, uh, where you need to build uh, loyalty. Loyalty is, is the key. So we have two challenges. One, to generate traffic, and two, uh, which will eventually lead to an ad funded model in your case, and do subscription, where you would need some differentiating factors and the form of premium model. But I didn't see in the presentation, you probably have it somewhere there, the user himself. Turning the user from a passive into an active, not just between him or her and the instructor, but between the users among themselves, establishing and enabling them to build communities. So for this, my question is, are you differentiating yourself only in the form of content, i.e. Arabic music, 
or you know, also leveraging the existing uh, social platform. So you, you allow your users to share, to create content, to give them wide, wide range of solutions where they can customize their own small communities and group. That's number one. Two, uh, we move on down the value chain and we talk about subscription. Why would anyone trust a startup company with sensitive information as credit card? Um, and that leads me to the third point that the business model where you have the key stakeholders, i.e., or e.g. in this case, the operators. Right? Is that something you're doing? I see. Actually, we're using, we're, we're using incredible uh, ways of, of getting with people pay us to pay PayPal. And we're currently integrating uh, the prepaid cards that are very popular in the, in the area, such as uh, Cashew and Cashew Mark Card. Uh, so so we, I don't think we have an issue with that, since we are working through those credible sources as a way of paying. Uh, the second question. The question uh, we talked about enabling users uh, ah, of course. to create content to share. Yes. Actually, I mentioned before is that our plan is to have a so small community and social media for musicians. So we, uh, we definitely have a plan to uh, everyone who can have their own profile and they can share content and they can share, uh, they can link with each other and maybe form groups and play together or chat together or learn together. And it's all, it's all going to be under the guise of umbrella, uh, providing all these sources that any, uh, everything that a musician will need. Thank you, Krishna. I have to be the only time keeper. So, one final note from Ahmed Yusuf here. Yeah, uh, just a hate to be between uh, Ali of, of uh, Arab and Arab. Um, is this for Arabs or for Arabs and um, all people who speak English? Uh, currently, we're focusing on Arabic okay. because it is not. But then, in your website, it says it's English. And uh, speaking of credibility, if I would go in there and I look at your website and I go in to try to do something in English and I register, I try to register in English and it defaults back to the Arabic form. So it just turned me off a little bit that I start out that your first thing is your web, you're doing everything in the web, but your web is not really up to bar. And I think you should check your website. Like a lot of stuff. <laughs> Take it offline with Hamad and Istikana also. Okay, thank you. Hello, how are you? Now it's uh, Istikana, Mr. Tarek Abulughut, General Manager of Istikana. Good afternoon. <coughs> uh, my name is Tarek Abulughut. I'm co-founder of uh, Istikana.com. Uh, Istikana is a video-on-demand platform that streams premium Arabic film and television content online, legally, in full, <clears throat> and for free. The reason we started Estikana almost a year ago was to solve three main problems. First, to the viewers who are looking for content online, um, big platforms of films, TV series, that are hard to find on TV stations anymore, or in DVD stores, <clears throat> and uh, probably segmented on YouTube in short segments. Uh, we tried to aggregate this content on Istikana and provide it for our viewer. The viewer has the option on Istikana to watch his content anywhere and on multiple platforms. We're already on the web, we're on mobile, we're on tablets, and uh, we recently soft launched with Samsung Smart TVs, um, our Smart TV app, and that should be rolling out uh, in the MENA region during the coming few months. Another experience we offer our viewers is to socialize while watching uh, this content on Istikana. Uh, we heavily rely on our viewers to suggest uh, content to us, share the content we're offering them, and even sometimes hook us up with content uh, owners uh, to try to engage them on Istikana. Our second client is the producer. Most of the content on Istikana is 3 to 30 years old. In our world, the, we believe that the monetization cycle of TV content is roughly three years. So a producer produces a piece of content, sells it first run, second run, third run, and within the two, three year area, the content becomes almost impossible to monetize. It is there that we step in as a Sikana 
and try to bring this content online and offer it to viewers and advertisers. So our third partner in Stikana is really the advertiser. <clears throat> because we um, stream long-form video, we have a quite a massive uh, ad, um, ad inventory. Uh, so we uh, can cater a lot of advertising space to uh, clients wishing to advertise video online, which is a very effective and growing uh, area in advertising. What we'd like to develop through, our, uh, through this conference, really, is understanding the partnerships with content owners like NBC and Telcos. Um, we are not in the TV business, we are not in the catch-up business, as probably Shahid is. Uh, we're focusing our offering on the catalog, uh, catalog content of producers and huge stations like NBC. It is this content that we feel uh, we'd like to present to our viewers, and it's this content we feel we can monetize through our advertisers. Um, to tell those, we will be uh, developing an app or a service that is premium and subscription based that will have more perks than the free Stikana model. Uh, we should be able to uh, present it to uh, potential clients at a very small um, monthly subscription fee and um, hopefully we'd like to uh, bring on the clients of Telcos on board offering them Stikana content on their mobile with the perks. One last uh, thing I, I need to mention about uh, the intake of Stikana. Uh, we were, when we first started, we thought that with big screens, with LCD, with all that happening, we didn't really pay much attention to mobile consumption of long-form uh, video content. We were shocked by the fact that 50% of our viewers today on Stikana access Stikana through their mobile, which is quite significant for us. Thank you very much. So congratulations, I think you've achieved in a, in a short period of time more than uh, many of us have uh, achieved over a much longer time with practical resources. Uh, and the, the user experience of Mr. Carlo is, is very nice. I was like trying it this morning, uh, virtually no buffering whatsoever, very clean look, uh, and the, the quality of the is very high. So, now, knowing the challenges that NBC's uh, experienced through the development of Shahid, that's an achievement. Um, one of the uh, one of our challenges at, uh, at NBC is trying to bring advertisers to the internet and making sure that we still get the premium that we would get on TV, because a lot of the internet advertising is cheap and, and, and uh, essentially cheap, uh, very low, you know, low price and low margin. On Shannon, we do this because we sell packages. If you want to advertise on Arab Stock Talent, then you come on, on, on online and you advertise on Shannon.net, and we do the whole 360, uh, and we get much higher rates because of that. Right. It's an expensive business delivering content. Uh, the infrastructure is high. How are you going to make sure that you get the volume of advertising and the right prices which you, which you acquire to deliver high quality video content? Um, it's a big concern for us, and that's why we have uh, two revenue streams, two major revenue streams, the advertising-driven free Stikana and the subscri subscription-based uh, service we're offering. Uh, I know that it's, it's very early on in the industry. It's a challenge to convince their advertisers to spend uh, online. Uh, in Jordan, for example, a lot of the, the bigger budgets are still being spent, not even on television, they're still being spent on print. So we know we have a long educational to, 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 to work out with our clients and uh, hopefully we will sustain ourselves long enough to be able to capture the, the online spend and the advertising. It is challenging. One final follow-up because our experience in our world is that people don't like paying for TV because they're, they're spoiled for choice and they like it free. We would love to have subscription on, on, on channel as well. We believe that really it's going to be the international people in the US and, and, and Europe the Arab diaspora who will go for the subscriptions. What, what, uh, what, where does your, your current viewership come from? Is it mostly uh, within the Middle East or is it outside? Um, most of it is from the Middle East, uh, mostly Saudi Arabia. 
uh, seconds, the GCCs under the bond. Uh, but there are good numbers from uh, on basic Arabs abroad, like in the US and, uh, and other parts of Europe. Uh, ring tones, ring back tones, 
least that's my experience in Gordon. Um, so I'm thinking the logic says that if the amount of money paid by subscribers around the server in return for 5,000 hours of popular content, it's not a bad thing. I'm hoping this will engage people to make that step to pay to pay for content. On the other side, in the US, um, Netflix and Hulu are doing great. Um, I think Netflix is around 30 million users. Um, definitely they have the content, they have the means, they have the technology, they have it all. Uh, but there's no reason to think why we, would, we, we won't move into a market or a product like Netflix or Hulu. Thank you, Tariq. Please uh, take your seat. Okay. Now call on to uh, Allah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Ala Estelal. I'm the founder and CEO of Jamalud.com. Jamalud is an online bookstore for Arabic and English books. We have launched in 2010 by offering a catalog of 300,000 books from uh, 27,000 publishers from all over the world. Our main goal is to increase our catalog to 7.5 million of titles by the end of this year. And uh, this is a screenshot of our website. We have been building very strong relationships with publishers all over the, the region and outside our MENA region. Uh, right now we are shifting the digital industry, uh, uh, shifting the publishing industry in our region to the digital industry. So using our relationships with those publishers and with the power of uh, tablets industry, as it is expected to cross 10 billion dollars by the end of 2016. Our solution that's coming by the end of this year also is to offer these books as an e-books over uh, several dig digital platforms connected to mobile operators in each country where people can get e-books, buy them, purchase them, and pay using their SIM cards. So, because we have noticed how, how it is problematic to uh, use credit cards in our region, as people are not using them and the penetration is not that much. 90% of our sales happen to be cash on delivery. By this model, by using the micropayments and by connecting to mobile operators, we, uh, we expect a uh, very huge success with the e-books industry as what we believe is that for the tablet industry and for the smartphones there are three main uh, streams of revenues. One is to have an e-books platform, the other is to have a music platform and the third one is to have an app platform where you can offer applications and connect them to the operators. So, uh, this is what we have. We have built strong relationships and we are now going to connect publishers to operators. And I hope by this event, by our advisors, we can communicate with the, most of the operators in the region to build our relationships for the next quarter. Thank you. Uh, you see this correctly that we are the first 
uh, international Arabic online books to Arabic and English. For example, Jadir does not sell English books online. Uh, we are not the first uh, bookstore in the region. Uh, bookstores in the region started since 1998 with the first trail to compete with Amazon, but they were offering only Arabic. So when we started, there were, till now, we are the, the only bookstore that tries to combine Arabic and English. Uh, the first one to try to offer uh, services of Amazon that is customized for our region in terms of payment and shipping. Nobody can, for example, go to jadeebookstore.com and buy a book online. They just have the, have the catalog of books. So, it's, I mean, it's a very long time, since 1994, since Amazon launched, that we don't have Amazon services in our region. Uh, we don't have Arabic books online. The industry has half a million of Arabic books. We can't find more than uh, around 10,000 books to buy. So, this is in terms of uh, what we claim to be the first one. Now, for the number of books, we do not uh, like to put it online because it's increasing uh, every day. Uh, you cannot, for example, uh, find on Amazon anywhere that they claim that they have 5.5 million titles of books. Because we don't think that we should announce this number outside, but uh, easily if you go to any of the categories, Arabic or English, and the press of the category to give you the total number of titles. So anybody here can now go to our website and check the number of books and get the exact number of books, and it's much more than 300,000. And uh, by the way, the number of titles in the world is much more than 10 million titles. But unfortunately, our industry, the Arab industry, is something between half a million and one million books only. Uh, we generate only 15,000 uh, 15, books each year, the whole Arab region. We are trying to encourage people to read and to uh, write new books. We can try to encourage them to translate books from other languages to Arabic. The English industry produces 450,000 books each year. So it's a, big, uh, a huge market that needs a lot of people to contribute to the Arabic content. And that's our hope that through connecting our services to the mobile operators, we can make these books for cheap prices, affordable, and anybody can read any book anywhere. That's what we call we are building the industry. Let me just say one thing. Having gone through the presentations, you guys make us proud. I'm very proud of you, all of you. Thank you. Present. Uh, every time we work with young Arabs, uh, they never let us know, even when it comes to creativity. Not too long ago, we had a similar workshop in the room for developers. People stayed for 24 hours, 24 consecutive hours, working on stop to develop applications based on certain specs. They started on Monday, finished, it was a team effort, and there was a winner here. Uh, 
at the door? And does your, does your business model cope with that? Well, actually, that's uh, accurate, uh, especially in the 30% of retailers. Um, for cash and delivery, because the penetration of credit cards, or uh, let me say, most of people, when uh, they try to do e-commerce online in our region, 80 to 90 percent of them prefer to use, pay using either a payment like Sadat in Saudi Arabia, where uh, they pay using their bank accounts, or using cash and delivery. Um, for us, we take in our business model that we know that there is 30 percent of returns, especially from Saudi Arabia, because not only they may not like our product, but because uh, there are some cultural issues uh, in some countries in this region. Uh, we are th trying to build our brand and uh, counting on converting these people to other kind of payments like mobile payments in uh, this region. It could uh, be a successful story in this region. But for, with reality business, we are fine. Because it's like we are educating the market, we are helping people to buy books and to shift them to much more mature markets. So we know about it and uh, even for Saudi Arabia, for example, as we are targeting it by next month, we are opening a customized uh, store for them that will be completely different than Jabiron.com because of the censorship issue, for example, on the content side in their country. Is that good? So this is a logistic scale. At the end of the day, you really don't know why the how optimize your logistics system and network is in this particular business, if I understand Yeah, I'd like to uh, tell you something about our logistics. We ship Arabic books from uh, Jordan and Lebanon, English books from the US, and uh, soon we'll start shipping them from London. It's a big headache to connect with logistics and with publishers from each region and to have do the calculations which source is cheaper, is faster to our customers all over the world. We do not show this pen to our customers, we keep it in the back end, and it's really a very big effort to do the supply chain management very well. Not like, for example, our ebook platform that we are waiting for, it is very easy to download the ebook to the smartphone or the iPad. There's no Arabic, there's no shipping company, you just need the book, there's no customs, there's no censorship. Thank you, Allah. Thank you.